Everybody say, God is with me. Everybody say, God is blessing me. Everybody say, I am important to God. You know what? I was, uh, I, was in, I was in Hong Kong just a few days ago. And I went there with my family, with some preacher friends. We, we preached the word, but we also had some time off. And, and then I bought something from Hong Kong. And uh, I bought a plate. You know how much this plate is? 150 Hong Kong dollars. 995 pesos. That's terrible. This plate made in China. 10 pesos, probably. But can you just imagine? You know, they, 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 I, they sold it for... And I bought. I bought it. I was cheated, duped, fooled. <laughs> because, because uh, you know, there's this, there's this, there's this, uh, you know why I bought it? Because my picture and the, my family's picture is there. See? And, uh, a 10 peso plate becomes 995 pesos because my family is there. And, you know, a photographer came, we were in the harbor view, and he clicked the photograph, and we said, hi, hello, and then two hours later, he comes back with a plate. <laughs> and I was telling myself, you know, 150, my gosh, 150, okay, 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 you know, because you know, my family is there. If I don't buy it, he's going to throw it away. I don't want him to throw away my family. Now, sometimes in our life, we go through trials, we go through problems, and uh, sometimes you meet the doctor, the, the medical report says you're sick and you feel bad, and you, there's bills piling up on your table and you feel bad. You've got, a, you've got a problem in your job and you feel bad, you feel scared, and sometimes you think that you're not important to God. I want you to know you're God's family and you are important to God. Your price tag is every drop of blood that God had. He said, okay, I'm willing to pay that. It's expensive, but I'm willing to pay that because you're my family. Everybody say that again. God is important, God is important. and I am important to Him because we're family. Amen. Father God, we ask you that you speak to us. We're going to open John chapter 8, verse 31. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So Jesus said to those who believed in Him, if you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. Say that with me. So Jesus said to those who believed in Him, if you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. I read that verse because the original Greek says, if you keep on obeying my teaching, it's not just if you obey, the original Bible, Greek language says, if you keep on, everybody say, keep on. Keep on. Obedience is not an isolated act. Obedience is a habit. Everybody say that. Yes. Tell someone beside you, habit. habit. You know, if you want to change your life, it's not, it's not through action, it's not through knowledge, it's not through information, it's by changing our habits. Amen? Amen. And you know how to change habits? Ask me how. how. Relationships. Now, the title of the talk is Repeat Until. We've got to repeat, repeat, repeat. You know, you don't say, I know that already, Bo. No, I've got to say it again, I've got to say it again. You know, truth has to be spoken again and again and again, but within the context of a relationship. Say relationship. We're going to go through Proverbs and we're going to look at chapter 13 verse 20 and it says together, keep company with the wise and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you will be ruined. Now you know why? Because it's in relationships that your habits will change. You want to change a habit in your life? get into a good relationship with a wise person who already has the habit you want. You got me? You got me? How many of you want to have the habit of joy? You want that? How about the habit of holiness? You want that? Or the habit of prayer? You want that? 
Look for people who already has that habit. Stick around, hang out with them, talk with them, converse with them, spend time with them because it is in relationships that you will learn habits. Amen? You will also learn bad habits, by the way, <laughs> uh, if in relationships. So be careful with the people you hang out with. And my key passage for the day is Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy chapter 6 says together, Israel, remember this. The Lord and the Lord alone is our God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Never forget these commands that I am giving you today. Teach them to your children. Repeat them when you are at home and when you are away and when you are resting and when you are working. Tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what we're going to pray for. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right. Oh boy, this is wonderful. Can I, can I perform a magic trick for you? Can I? Will you promise to, to clap if it doesn't work? You know, I'm an amateur here. And, but, but, you know, if this works, I'll have another income stream. You can hire me for your children's parties. Talk to my wife, she's my manager. I've got three strings here of equal length, okay? They're of equal length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform a magic trick. And I'm, I'm, going, to make, I'm going to make something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make these strings uh, of different lengths. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, oh, I should have changed my, removed my jacket, right? Just, just in case you think it comes from my sleeves. No, it's, it's not. It's, uh, let's see. Uh, Bene, can you come here? Can you blow, blow really hard? Okay, okay, let's see. Okay, Fran uh, Bene, can you come here again? Okay, here it is. Okay, okay, oops, there, hold it, here on top, okay, and here, oh, this one, and there, ta-da, yay. Oh. Okay, another income stream, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Now the reason why I performed a, a, a tiny trick is this. The difference between the magician and the audience is not knowledge. Many people think it is. Oh, the difference between a magician and, a, and an audience is he knows the trick and the audience don't. You know what? You just Google <laughs> magic tricks. You go to YouTube. You go to a bookstore. They're, they're, everything is there. It's true. You, you just say magic tricks. And all the magic tricks you can think of, all the secrets are out there. The knowledge is out there. The difference between a magician and an audience is knowledge and practice. I performed a, a magic trick in front of you. It lasted for 30 seconds. I had to practice for 30 minutes. You know, I had to practice. Say that word, practice. If you, want, if, if you want success, if you want change, if you want blessing, it's not knowledge, it's practice. It's practicing the knowledge. It's doing it again and again and again. And I'm going to say something, and I said it before, I'll say it again. The best place to learn habits is in, is in, is in relationships. Shout it out, relationships. You want to change your life? Get into a good relationship and, and learn from that person. You want to help someone change? Get into a relationship with that person. You know what? One of the things, there, there are three things I want, I, want, I want to share with you today. How many? The first thing is to help someone change or for you to be changed, you've, get, you've got to get into a relationship of hope, a relationship of love, a relationship of trust. Let me tell you a story. When, when, my, when my little boy, Bene, was, was tiny, I would ask him, what do you want to be when you grow up? Cowboy. 
He wanted to be a cowboy. How could I tell him there were no cowboys anymore in the world? No more Marlboro cowboys. But anyway, he wanted to. And then after a few months, he wanted to be a, he wanted to be a chemist because he wanted to be in a laboratory with bubbling test tubes. And then after that, he wanted to be a, a stockbroker. And then after that, he wanted to be an artist and so on. But behind, at the back of my mind, I was saying, when will he say he wants to become a preacher like his dad? When will he say he would want to be a writer like his dad? And, and then, you know, it was my friends who were asking him, Benny, do you want to become a preacher like your dad? No. <laughs> uh, Benny, do you want to become like a writer like your dad? No. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes you can't help it. If you have a good relationship with someone, you begin to pick up. Everybody say that word. Pick up the habits. The habits of the other person. I'm a preacher. And I'm a writer. Guess what? No surprise. I've got the habits of a preacher and a writer. And I really think, you know, bottom line, there are only two. One is a love for learning. And number two, a love for stories. A love for learning and a love for stories. I love to learn. I love reading books. Guess what? My son loves to read books. Why? I never told him, read a book. I never told him, read a book, build a library. But he sees me every day. He respects me. He loves me. I love him. Guess what? He sees me reading books every day. He sees my library. He, he looks at my desk. He cannot see my desk because it's filled with books. I'm not joking. You visit my office, books piled up like that. You won't see a square inch of my desk. I love books. You know what? My son, he can read five books in one day. My son, he, he, he can spend the whole day reading a book. I never forced him to do it. What happened? It was a relationship of love and trust and hope. He just picked it up. He loves stories. Why? Because I love stories. You know, I think every kid does. But guess what? You've got to know how to share a story. Every night, when he would sleep, before he'd sleep, he'd say, Daddy, can you tell me a story? Sure. And I'd sit down and I'd pick a story from, my, from the air. Like, like, like I, just. one day there was a goat named Billy. He was going down the mountain and he had a friend named Charles who was a bat. And the goat, you know, I just, I'd create a story out of nothing. And he'd be there in rapt attention. Wow. And then what next? I have no idea. And then, and I was, you know. I, I wouldn't know what will happen, you know, but, but that's what we did every night, every night, every night. And so guess what? He now loves telling stories. And now he writes stories. He'd, he'd go to the laptop and he'd, he'd start writing stories at the age of eight. Now, now he's nine. By the way, he celebrated his birthday uh, a few days ago. And, and he's nine years old now. But, but he started uh, being the host of Mustard TV uh, every Saturday, seven o'clock in the morning. And then you know what? He starts telling Bible stories on TV. Watch this. Stories from the Big Book. Hey kids, sit back and relax. Story time time. Today I'm going to tell you the story of Jesus. Jesus sleeping in the storm. One day, Jesus and his apostles were exhausted from preaching to people near the, the banks of the Sea of Galilee. When they rode a boat across the Sea of Galilee, a storm blew up. A giant gale whirled up the sea and caused waves, giant waves, to curl up. Imagine how frightened the apostles were, and Jesus was just sleeping, sleeping in the storm. Jesus slept and slept, but the apostles were so frightened that they had to wake up Jesus and say, Master, we're about to drown. And Jesus said, Actually, Bello not said, Calm the storm! And the storm, you know, that giant gale, it <coughs> vanished. And that's how the apostles knew that Jesus was really the Messiah. You know, the apostles missed two facts. The first fact is 
that God wouldn't let Jesus perish until his mission would be completed here on earth. And they also missed that. If you have a lot of faith in God, you can do anything. So kids, even if you have problems, you can sleep in your problems, just like how Jesus slept in this storm. Till next time, this is Ben Sanchez with Stories from the Big Book. I tell him he's the preacher with missing teeth. <laughs> Somebody told me one time, you know, Bo, you preach like Joel Austin. And when, he, when that person told that to me, I said, you know, I've never heard him preach before. I'll find out. So I watched Joel Austin preach. And you know what? He preaches like me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll tell you the story of Joel. At the age of 18, his father, John Osteen, was a preacher. And for the longest time, John Osteen and, and his mother, Dodie, they, they said, Joel, why don't you preach? And he said, no, that's not me. At the age of 18, he told his father, John Osteen, I'm going to take care of the media. Let's open a TV ministry. I'll be behind the camera. And that's what he did. Age 18, behind the camera, you know, and ta taking, taking uh, the, the, his father, um, shooting him. And 17 years, the mother and the father would ask him at different times, Hey, Joel, why don't you go to the pulpit and start preaching? And Joel said, No, nah, 17 years. He said, No. I'm, I'm okay. I'm here behind. The, I'm supporting you, Dad. And, you know. and then one day, one day, the mother tells Joel, Joel, this Sunday, why don't you preach? And you know, Joel said, okay. For the very first time, he said, okay. And on that Sunday, Joel started preaching. His father, John Osteen, was in the front row watching his son preach for the very first time. A few days later, John Osteen had a heart attack and died. Guess who took over? Joel Osteen. And Joel, from a church of 6,000 members, he made it grow to 30,000 members. And his TV ministry is in 100 countries. He's much better than his father. It turned out. You know why? Because of that relationship where he picked up habits, habits of righteousness, habits of faith, habits of studying, habits of preaching, habits of writing. Are you listening? Amen? Amen? And you know what? What I'm going to do is this. Number one, you need a what? Relationship of? Of hope, of love, of trust. Number two, you need what? Modeling of habits. You've got to have credibility. What if I told Benny, Benny, I want you to read a book. You better read a book. You better love reading because if you don't read, you won't grow and blah, 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 blah. And then I sit down and watch TV, HBO. Would that work? Would that work? No. You've got to have credibility. You've got to model the habits. Raise your hand if you want to help someone change. You want to help someone change? Everybody say model. Tell someone beside you, you've got to model. You've got to model. Whatever habit. Hey, parents, you want your kids to respect you? Flash report. Unless you respect them, they won't respect you back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Many parents don't respect their kids. Believe me. You know? They, they, no, they don't. Anna! Bring it, God! And late, late. No. Do you, do you speak that way to a, to a stranger? Do you speak that way to an office mate? Some of you say yes. No? <laughs> you know, what, what am I saying? I'm saying, you know, you've got to respect your child. Model the habit of respect if you want the child to... Amen? Take that. You don't, so you don't even have to tell your child... Son, respect me. No, he'll just pick up the habit of respect. You know, if you respect your son or your daughter, she's going to pick it up. Amen? Are you listening? Here, here's something. Number three. Oh, oh, let, 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 let's, uh, let me give you a fictional story. May I? Think of a fictional person. Let's, let's call him a fictional name. Randy Borromeo. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 any, any similarities to a real person is purely coincidental. 
Now, let's say Randy is a director of a Catholic media ministry, okay? And let's say he is 300 plus pounds. And he wants to lose weight. Oh, he really wants to lose weight. And he's dying to lose weight. So he looks for a personal trainer. Can you help this fictional character choose a personal trainer? I'll show you the two options, okay? Can you help him choose? Option number one, Richard the Monster Rodriguez. Richard the Monster Rodriguez is a eight-time Mr. Universe champion. And, and, and he spends eight hours a day in the gym, six days a week, and he eats two steaks and 12 eggs, and you know, he's, he's a, he's a full-time bodybuilder. He started bodybuilding at the age of 10. At the age of 16, he can carry a small truck with his bare hands. I mean, he is a monster. Now, option one, and, and, and Randy's thinking, hmm, and, and Mr. The Monster, Richard Rodriguez, is offering his services. Randy, I can be your personal trainer. Ooh, I will make you like me. Ooh. Option number two is another personal trainer. His name is Paolo Galia. He's a bit overweight, not yet really trim, but he's an actor. He's an actor of the same you know, industry, same world that Randy is moving in. So they have the same lingo, same language, you know, so they can talk about lots of stuff, a lot of things in common.